Today I'm going to show you a few methods you can use to create this procedural light sweep effect in Blender. I find this is a pretty common client request, so hopefully you find this useful. To set up our scene, I'm going to get rid of that cube and bring in a circle. On the bottom left here, you can see where it says Add Circle. You click that and bring up these options, and I'm going to change the fill type from Nothing to End Gone. And that's just a multi-sided face. I'm going to change the top right to the 3D viewport, zoom in, and uh, make this a little bigger as well. If you hold down Z and move your mouse up, you go into rendered mode. I'm going to change this entire middle area to my shader editor so we can have a bigger view of what our nodes are going to be like. And I'm going to put that material that was on our cube onto our circle. I'm going to hit N to get rid of this shelf here. And uh, we're going to do a really simple setup here. I'm just going to type coordinate and bring in this texture coordinate node. And let's come out of object and go into a mapping node and then into a separate XYZ. Uh, Shift A to search for these nodes, by the way. I didn't mention that. You just hit Shift A and then you can search or select them from these lists here. Uh, but I find it faster to search. And then I'm going to bring in a math node and just leave it set to add. Let's move all this over, bring in a bit more space for us here. Then I'm going to bring in a color ramp and place it right here. So we're just going to use these five notes for our main setup. You're going to want to select an image that you're, you're going to do this light sweep across. I'm just going to use an image of, you know, something I did an old tutorial, that stained glass one. And I'm going to come into view V for this one here. And that means I'm just going to need to map this out really quick. So I'm just going to open up a UV editor, which I'll close in a second here. I'm just going to view my circle from the top by hitting seven on the number pad, tab into edit mode and just hit U and then project from view. And so this is going to give me a circle in the middle there. I'm going to hit A to select everything and then just hit S to scale it up till it's, you know, right about there. That looks fine. Tab out of edit mode and I'll just close this up here. So we've got our sheet or editor back. I'm going to come to the color ramp and just adjust this slightly here. I'm not going to be too precise, but I'm just going to drag the black up there, the white down, and then just create a new flag at the top that's going to be black as well. So if you look at this here, we can see it's just a stripe. And we can move that stripe across uh, with this add here. And if we wanted to angle this, we could use the Z rotation. So let's say we want to do it at 30 degrees. Then when we swipe this across, it's just going to be a nice angle there. Maybe negative 30. Look pretty cool. Let's try that out. Yeah, that looks cool. I'll leave it on that for now. I'm going to plug the color output of this image texture into my printable BSDF. So just look at that there. And then I'm going to plug this color output of the color ramp into the emission input here. So now we can kind of see it's this white line going across. And I'm just going to turn that down slightly, maybe actually quite a lot. Maybe like, let's go to point 0.1 or let's try point 0.2. That's pretty good. And we can see we can widen this or we could even make it, you know, if we wanted it to be like, let's say we could put some white sliders here and we're just going to select this so we get another white one. Uh, make it a bigger band or we could, you know, create a new node here, change this to multiply, and then we can make the band you know, wider or skinnier. So let's say we wanted a really wide band, just lower that multiply number. Now it's almost as wide as the image itself. Or if we you know, turn this up to something like two, now it's a much more narrow band. I'm just gonna undo all of those steps, but I just wanted to show you a few options there. So just get rid of those flags and bring this back like this here, maybe a bit wider. Something like that looks good. So I'm going to bring this add to, let's say, 1.8. Now it's completely off there. And let's open up the timeline. I'm on frame one there. And I'm going to hover over this input field here and hit I on my keyboard. And that's going to create a keyframe. You can't see it unless this add and this material or this mesh here is selected at the same time. So just make sure they both are selected. And you should see this yellow keyframe on frame one there. And then let's go to frame 100, let's say. Uh, I'm just going to make this 100 frames long. And uh, let's go ahead and select something like negative 0.6. And again, while we're on frame 100, hover over this input field and hit I, and that'll capture another keyframe. Right now, it's with a, you know, it's it starts slow, then goes fast in the middle, kind of interpolation. Uh, to change that, I'm just going to have both of these keyframes selected hit V while in the timeline, and I'm going to select Vector. And now it's going to be a linear interpolation. So if we hit Play or Spacebar, it goes a little slowly. I'm just going to move these a little closer together, uh, just with S, or even moving them individually. Why don't we just go like 30 frames, 
something like that. And I'll just hit G and we'll move both of them into the middle there. So now when we play it, we can see a little bit faster. That's still actually quite slow. Why don't we do a 10 frame swipe? Yeah, looks great. So 10 frames, that's the kind of effect I'm going for. But again, this is a very personalized thing, uh, just depending on what effect you want, really. I'm going to select around frame 45 there so that we can see the effect on our object. And uh, then I'm going to try plucking this color into the emission string. So we can see what's happening here is um, basically it's converting this color image here into a black and white image. So just basically this right here. And then it's feeding that into the color strength and the white or close to white areas are going to be higher emission and the darker areas are just going to be lower emission. So that's basically what it's doing there. Um, it's just, you know, changing the emission strength depending on what material it is. So a lot more emission here, a lot less emission right there. Just kind of an interesting effect. Another thing we could try too is plugging this image texture into the emission itself and then this color ramp into the emission strength. Here it almost gives like a flashlight type effect. And we could even bump this up just by putting maybe a math note right here and just changing it to multiply, maybe changing this to like five or something like that. Um, now it's much brighter right there uh, as we see this flash across. Um, you know, it looks, looks a little different there. Another thing that I felt uh, gave a pretty cool effect is using a hue saturation value note. So I'll just unplug those for a second here and bring in uh, hue saturation value and place it right here and uh, then a mix RGB and just place it right after and I'll just move this over give us a bit more room so this color ramp is going to go into the factor this hue saturation value is going to go into color one and then this image texture is going to go into color two then I'm going to feed this into the base color on the principled BSDF there now you can see if I go to frame 45 or so it's actually just a thin strip of the color in there. And that's actually because I haven't plugged this image texture into color yet, um, which is, you know, it's up to you if you want to do that or not. And then with this hue saturation value node, I'm just going to bring it down so it's basically at maybe 0.1 or something like that. It looks like a cool flashlight effect again. Um, you know, this is something that you can plug into the emission if you want, but it looks pretty cool just through the principal BSDF. So that's it for today. I just wanted to show you a quick example of a couple methods you could use to create these light sweeps. I find it uh, really useful for, you know, your own logos or just some quick client work as well. I find you get a lot of these types of requests. Thanks very much to my Gumroad and Patreon supporters. and Thanks for watching.